This is a 2008 Toyota Camry Solara convertible. It's a rather rare find in the used car convertible market these days, and for good reason. They didn't build a whole lot of them, and the ones that remain are very sought after. In this video, I'm going to go through some of the history on the first and second generation of this car, as well as give you some information about things to look out for when buying one. The Solara was about as close to a Lexus as a Toyota can be. It had the comfort, convenience, and the sportiness of a Lexus. The first generation Solara ran between the years 1999 to 2003, and it was built on the Toyota Camry platform, and that's why this is called the Toyota Camry Solara. Now, those units that were produced were actually sent uh, from the Toyota factory semi-built to the American Sunroof Company where they would chop the B and the C pillars off, install the convertible top, and then they would send them back to Toyota where they would do the painting and final assembly. Now there were no structural changes from the Camry to the convertible and that's why most of the complaints on the first generation Solara were about the ride and the handling. There were virtually no problems, however, with the 3.0 1MZFE engine, which was a non-interference uh, engine with a timing belt. Now that engine was made it to a dependable four-speed transmission, and too bad that those early years didn't come in a manual. Now the only real problems that this engine had had to do with maybe a little bit higher mileage units. You would have clogged idle air control valves, the O2 sensors would go out, the ignition coils would fail and valve cover gaskets, uh, there would be leakage. Now this is all small potatoes as far as maintenance is concerned. There were some early sludge problems that occurred on these engines, but that was more to do with neglect than anything else. The second generation came with a new 3.3 liter engine. That was an interference engine, by the way, with a timing belt and that was made it to a more efficient five-speed transmission. Now the sludge problem from the earlier 3.0 engine was much less on the 3.3, and that might have been because Toyota changed the frequency of the oil change intervals from 7,500 down to 5,000. Now that would have affected a lot of sludge problems because people were maintaining their engine oil on a more regular basis than they were before. A real simple way to know whether someone changed their oil regularly on that 3.3 engine is to just take off the oil cap and look at the oil filler cap and see if there's any uh, big carbon residue. What's inside there is carbon buildup. That's normal. But if you have a lot of carbon around here and a lot of carbon on the cap, that's usually a bad sign that the oil wasn't changed frequently. This 3.3 engine was also found on the Toyota Highlander, so that'll would apply to that as well. Now that 3.3 engine, codenamed 3MZFE, was an evolution of the earlier 3.01 MZ engine. Now the new one had an increase of power and efficiency, which was a welcome change. Now that 3.3 engine was really good, and you don't want to destroy that engine because you forgot to change the timing belt because it, like I said, is an interference engine, and you don't want to risk that. The only fault on that engine is maintaining the rear three spark plugs and changing them out. In order to get to them, you have to lift off the entire intake, which is the plenum, to get underneath there and then change the gasket when you put it all back together. And it's time intensive, but fortunately you only have to do that once or twice through the engine's entire lifetime. The second generation Solara was equipped with four wheel disc with ABS, it had brake force distribution and dual stage airbags, which made the newer Solara a much safer car. It also had rollover protection. In 2005, there was a mid-cycle refresh. It came with a redesigned front fascia. It had a new rear bumper with integrated backup lights. But most of the changes came on the interior with a restyled gauge cluster. It had Bluetooth together with an auxiliary port. It had a revised shifter and a newly styled steering wheel. One more thing about the Toyota Solara convertible is the ease of use in bringing the top up and down. It only takes 
10 seconds to do so. It's very easy. The Solara convertible always consisted of about 20% of the entire Solara lineup. In 2008, the Toyota Solara sales dwindled down to a mere 20,000. The heyday of the Solara sales were clearly over, which makes the 2008, which is what this is, one of the most desirable convertibles that you will ever find as a used car. As far as used convertibles are concerned, you cannot do any better than a Toyota Solara. It's good looking, it's reliable, it's safe, it's easy to maintain. Really, there's just no comparison to anything else that's out there. Buy one today, enjoy it, and you can probably sell it for just about as much money as you originally bought it for used. That's what Toyotas are known for, and the Solara is a shining example of just that. I'm Greg, your car angel. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. And it's starting to seriously rain right now. So, see you.